Hello, beautiful readers. Today is October 14th, and I have finished reading A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. This, of course, is the basis of the HBO series by the same name, and I wanted to read the books before I started getting into the series because I understand they follow the books quite well. Um, so, the basis of this fantasy land is a land called the Seven Kingdoms, which were, at one point, seven separate kingdoms. But then people got dragons, <laughs> and dragons take everything. So, the, the Targaryens... Uh, are the dragon riders in this particular realm, and they had conquered all seven kingdoms and had consolidated under one king and then had the various houses turned into lords. So it turned into more of a regular feudal system that way. So there's lords and knights and bannermen and all that kind of thing, typical of feudal societies. And to the north of this kingdom, there's what's called a wall. And there are people who guard this wall called the Night's Watch. They guard against wildlings and whatever else happen to live up in the really cold, frozen north area. But there's also a supernatural being they help to guard against called the Others. We don't really know what they are, just that they're bad and they kill people. So, there's those people, and then um, there's also lands to the east, I think, over the Narrow Sea, where there are free cities, and a bunch of people called the Dothrakai, who are essentially nomadic tribal people that have way different way of doing things than the people in the Seven Kingdoms. So most of the stories take place in the land of the Seven Kingdoms, and we start off in Winterfell with the Starks. Ned Stark is the lord, and he has um, three sons and two daughters, and one bastard child, which he's raising basically as another son. And so we get to hear from him, um, his bastard child, Bran, the eight-year-old boy, and then his two daughters and his wife. So at least six of the point of views are all from Starks, or, well... The bastard is technically not a Stark, but whatever. And then we also get to hear another point of view from um, Danny Targaryen, who is um, the youngest girl at the time of this book. She's about 13. And she is over in the Free Kingdoms because they've been exiled. The rest of her family was killed off when Robert took the throne about 13 years pre prior to the beginning of this book. And so they're over in the Freelands, and you get to see what happens to them, uh, her and her brother. They're the only people left. And then in the Freelands, or in the Seven Kingdoms, rather, you also get to hear from um, Ty Tyrion Lann Lannister. And that's about it. So those are the eight or so main points of view uh, that you get to hear from. But Martin does beautiful job, beautiful, beautiful job of managing to tell a story, keep the plot line going, tell it from different points of view, and even include enough of the history and enough of the um, different takes on things that have happened to explain stuff so you understand, basically. Because if you didn't have some of the history things explained, you wouldn't know, for instance, why the Targaryens are over in the free lands. Why are there no other people? Thankfully, one of them talks incessantly about how he used, should be king. Or, mm, anyway, so he does, Martin does a fantastic job of explaining things from different points of view, and he does really good uh, with ends of chapters. Sometimes he creates like little cliffs, cliffhangers at the end of a chapter, but it's not a huge enough to make you like skip ahead to the next one, which is good because there's so much that happens in between that you have to know before you can get to the next one. So it's almost like there's little mini novellas all tied together in this book. It's very well done. Uh, some of the issues I had um, the violence wasn't bad, actually, considering what 
was happening, all the battles and things that were happening. Um, the sexual nature I wasn't necessarily expecting. It wasn't horrible for most of it, except for, surprise, rapes happening over there. That was a little disturbing for me. And there was some supernatural activity that I didn't care for. I'm not a huge fan of the blood magic, creepy things happening. Um, so if any of those things are offensive to you, not the book for you. But if you can handle those things, I highly recommend it. It was so good. It kept me on my edge, edge of my seat all of the time. And yet there's like little chapter breaks that are firm enough breaks that I felt like I could stop for a minute and go do something else and come back to it and still kind of understand what was going on. So I highly, highly, highly recommend this book. I look forward to reading the rest of the series, and I don't know what I'm reading next, so if you have any comments, suggestions, put them below. Obviously, I have a huge list, but I'll get to them all eventually. So uh, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and keep reading.